What's up everyone, Nicholas here, and today we're gonna to be doing a quick comparison of Typeform versus Make Forms. If you are searching for a form tool, or maybe you are currently using Typeform and are thinking of switching to Make Forms or vice versa, this is the video for you because I will be breaking down some of the pros and cons of both platforms. We will also be looking at some of the pricing information, and I will let you know which of these two form tools I've recently switched to. So let's jump right in. Now, before we get into the specifics of each platform, let me preface by saying why it is important to have a robust form tool if you are a marketer or if you are a business owner or you're working in a business. Why is that even important? Well, sure, you could use something like Google Forms, but one, it's not that robust. Two, it doesn't really make your brand look that professional when you're using something like that. And if you are doing any type of conversion optimization or you're trying to get more people to convert from being a visitor on your website or in your funnel to being a lead, a prospect, or a customer, then you want to pay attention to this because forms are very, very important in that conversion life cycle. What I mean by that is that if you create a form that is optimized to get people to take that next step, and this is what I'm referring to when I talk about conversion optimization, then you're gonna be doing a lot better as a marketer and you're gonna be ultimately spending less money to acquire that lead or to acquire that customer. So form optimization and choosing the right form product or form tool is crucial if you want to improve your marketing. So it's not just one of those tools that you kinda maybe sorta might need someday. It's something that could be considered mission critical if you're doing any type of marketing activities or you're trying to capture leads or make sales. So with that being said, the chances are that you're, you're probably watching this video because you've either heard of Typeform or Makeforms or you're trying to do some comparison of both. So what's the difference and which one should you go with? Well, Typeform has been around a lot longer. Um, they're sort of the 800 pound gorilla in the space. They're, it's a great company. They've put a lot of work into making this product uh, truly stand out from a lot of the other form tools on the market. And they're one of the few marketing or SaaS companies, in my opinion, that are really good at one thing, which is these progressive one at a time style forms. And what I mean by that is you might be able to see some here on the website. Uh, hopefully they have some templates here that we can take a look at, but here's an example. So this is a quiz style type form and you click through and you see how there's just one question at a time. You go through, you can put in your information, and you're progressively going through. Some are images, some are text, some can be drop downs. you can put in a number. It is very focused on one question at a time. And this is intentional because there's actually a scientific purpose behind why they're doing this. It's that if you give people too many choices or there's too many form fields all at once, it's going to reduce the likelihood that someone's gonna fill out that entire form. So from a conversion optimization standpoint, this is the way to go in most cases. Cases. And that's one thing that originally drew me to Typeform was the fact that at the time, many years ago, all the other form tools were uh, just showing all the form fields at the same time. I think I was using Woo Forms way back in the day. And then I heard about Typeform and I switched to it and I used it for many years and I was very happy with it. Um, however, the pricing is a bit expensive for what you're getting in my opinion. When you look at the plans, if we switch to monthly here, you can see with the basic plan, which includes Typeform branding, which you cannot get rid of, you only get 100 responses a month. Yes, you get unlimited forms and questions, but if you're doing any type of significant lead capture or you're collecting a significant amount of data, 100 responses or 100 form submissions is not that much in my opinion. So then you gotta bump up to the $60 a month plan for a thousand responses, three users, you can remove the branding and you get a custom subdomain. So that's probably the plan most people have to be on. And then of course you have the $100 a month plan where you get 10,000 responses. And this is where you're getting into some of the data and the analytics, such as drop-off rates, conversion tracking, priority support, and so on. Um, the drop-off rates is actually a very important feature. And I wish they included this on some of the lower plans because this tells you where in the funnel, because think of your form as a funnel since each question is being shown one at a time, where in that process or funnel are people leaving without completing the form? And if you can improve that question or that field and get more people to continue through, then you're gonna get a higher overall submission rate on that form. So that's actually a really important metric. And unfortunately, you can only get it on the business plan. 
And then of course they have the enterprise plan above that. So it's a great product. I'm not knocking Typeform, but it's not for everyone because uh, they kind of gatekeep a lot of the good features and it just seems like it's gotten more expensive over the years. Now they have all the things that you need to uh, have when you're building complex forms. So you can have um, very complex logic. You can save um, responses as variables, which is very important. Uh, you can also integrate with some third-party tools such as Zapier, Make. There's a whole bunch of different um, integrations that they offer as well as native integrations such as Google Sheets, uh, Slack. You can do a whole bunch of things with the native integrations or uh, worst case scenario is you just connect Typeform to Zapier or to make.com and you can connect to pretty much anything. So it is a ro robust product, but I feel like over the years it's gotten more expensive in my opinion and there's probably some other tools out there that give you more value. And that's what got me searching for different products uh, over the last six months. And that's when I stumbled upon Make Forms. And that's what I wanted to focus on next. So what's cool about Make Forms is that if we first look at the pricing, we'll start there. You can see they do have the essentials plan. You get 5,000 submissions compared to uh, for a similar price over here, you're getting 100, right? So already you're getting a lot more submissions. You get 10 gigabytes of storage. If people are uploading files on your forms, you get one custom domain um, and then you can move on up and let's just make sure we're on the monthly pricing, which we are. You can see for about 70 bucks a month, you get 15,000 submissions, 20 gigs of storage, uh, custom domains, custom fonts. And then of course you can go to the agency plan where you get 10 members, you get um, 150,000 submissions. I don't see where anyone would ever need that many, uh, but that's a very robust plan. And of course you can go to this page, you can see all the different features. You get the step forms, that's what they mean by the uh, ones that are one question at a time. So keep in mind on the free plan here, you don't get access to those. So you are going to have to be on one of the paid plans, uh, which is what I usually recommend anyways, because usually with the free plans, you're either gonna have a lot of branding or you're gonna have very limited features. Now, the other cool thing about Makeforms is that they have a lot of native integrations as well as Zapier and Make.com. Those are the two integrations I always look for when evaluating a tool because if I can see that it connects to either Zapier or Make.com, that pretty much opens up the ecosystem so that I can then connect that product to thousands of other apps. And personally, I like to, I like to use Zapier. Um, where I can connect to thousands of different apps, like I said, and um, and it just works. You can also do direct webhook integrations. You can connect to Google Analytics. So it's a very robust product. Uh, let's see if we can look at some of the templates real quick. So here we are in the interface. Let's actually create a form real quick. We're gonna do a one at a time form. So this is similar to um, what type form really popularized. And we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna call this test create. You can see everything's pretty quick, very simple interface here. You can have a welcome screen if you want, or you could just jump right into the form and you can put um, a simple question here, like what is your name? And that's your first question there. Then you can add another question. Why don't we do one that is a drop down? And we're just gonna say, what is your favorite color? And we are gonna choose some different options here. Let's choose red, blue, and yellow. Obviously, these are uh, pretty simple questions just to show you what the actual process looks like to build a form. You can also do a slider. These are pretty cool. You could say, how excited are you to fill out this form? And there's the slider. And there are so many different question types and you can even have uploads, right? So you could have someone upload something so you could say, upload your headshot. So that's usually helpful. And that's where that um, requirement or the, the limit of the file size comes into play when we're looking at the pricing. And I think there was 10 gigabytes on some of the plans. It's going to be determined based on how many uploads um, you have. And some forms may not require this, but it's just something that's good to know. And then of course you can create logic, just like with type form, you can create different branches, you can, um, you can also set different endings. So if you have uh, people answering in a certain way and they should see a different end screen or get redirected to a specific URL, you can do that as well. You can do that on Typeform as well. So why don't we preview the form and see what it looks like? So you can see it's uh, coming up here. We'll put in 
test. Then we'll click here, we'll click blue. How excited to fill out the form, 76. <laughs> and then I can upload a headshot if I wanted to. You can also make questions optional or required. That again is a feature that both of these products have. So as you can see, Make Forms is a relative newcomer to the scene, but I feel like they're doing a really good job taking the very best of a lot of the different for form tools out there. And I've used so many of them over the years from JotForm to Make Forms to Formstack to, like I said, WooForms. There's some that are specific to the WordPress ecosystem, such as Gravity Forms or Formidable Forms. I tend, I tend to stay away from those because I like form tools that are universal, that work outside of WordPress. And the cool things with uh, MakeForms is that it can work anywhere. You can embed it. You can have a dedicated page for it on its own URL. Um, you can have it work as a pop-up. It's a very robust product. And what I really like is the pricing. It's very affordable. And so if you are on the essentials plan, I think you're gonna get a lot of features here for a very good value. As you can see, there's really nothing held back. And with that limit of 5,000 submissions a month, that's more than pretty much anyone would ever need. So I encourage you to check out MakeForms. Now, of course, I am an affiliate with MakeForms, so you are more than welcome to use my link below. It helps support the channel, and that way I can continue to bring you review videos just like this. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you want more marketing videos and tool reviews, then hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.